Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to part two uh, of my run of Amazing World of DC Comics. For those of you that uh, might have missed the first part, uh, Amazing World of DC Comics was an in-house fanzine that DC uh, produced in the mid-70s and later 70s. And it was just uh, kind of a cool thing. It showed all the behind the scene going on and uh, upcoming projects and comics and a lot of really cool uh, unpublished stuff and articles and uh, some really cool stuff. Did the first few, uh, first five issues, excuse me. And so maybe we'll get through the next five without it running too long. Uh, this is issue number six. This is actually uh, another issue that I bought when I was a kid. Uh, came out in uh, May of 1975. This is a special uh, Joe Orlando issue. And if uh, the name Orlando sounds uh, familiar it's because he... Uh, he did a lot of work with EC Comics back in the 50s and later on uh, became a writer and an editor and an artist at DC. Uh, first we got the cover. This is done by Mr. Orlando himself. There you have uh, Kane and Swamp Thing and uh, looks like Jonah Hex and his own disembodied head. And on the back I think we have an illustration for what uh, was or maybe was going to be a cover for the House of Mystery. Looks uh, sort of like Neil Adams, not sure, but pretty cool. Uh, and speaking of Swamp Thing, here's a really cool uh, illustration of Bernie Wrightson from 1970 that made it into this book. So there's a lot of little stuff like this that just, you know, if you don't want to read the articles or, or look at the upcoming releases or whatever, I mean, it's just, uh, it's worth it for the price alone. Here's an article about Joe. It's when he worked for EC Comics. Very interesting stuff. Like I say, I've probably read through all these at least uh, three or four times. Some of them more than others. Uh, some of the more stuff there. Some of the books Joe edited. And uh, some more stuff. And some more on the characters he was involved with. Okay, uh, and this got a. Uh, I keep thinking this might have been in an actual issue of Plop, uh, but uh, I think this is no. It's actually an unpublished Plop story, and uh, it gives readers a glimpse of Joe Orlando, editor. And this is actually a comic book fiend versus the collector. So anybody that's read Plop knows how much fun this stuff is. Some really cool black and white artwork. Okay. Uh, here's an article by uh, Michael Oslin. How to have fun about if you want writing a comic book. There's another article about the beginnings of DC Comics. Very cool. Some of the uh, early mystery titles, House of Mystery, House of Secrets, The Unexpected. And I'm not sure, uh, I think this cover, 
think it, it was produced for the original Swamp Thing series. A uh, beautiful piece of, art, piece of artwork by uh, Mr. Redondo. So I guess if you had the multiples of these, these would make uh, great posters or something really nice to frame. You know, and I'm a huge fan of Bernie Wrightson, and, and I'm a you know just a fanatic about the first ten issues he did a Swamp Thing. But anybody that doesn't read those issues after and just kind of blows it off because it's not Bernie Wrightson, I mean, you need to give this stuff as a look, give it a look because uh, I mean, there's some beautiful work in here by Nestor Redondo. Okay, and here we have the letters page. Uh, And here's a classic favorite story of mine. Uh, this is an Orlando art job uh, of an EC classic, actually called Judgment Day. And I'm sure uh, fans of EC and the EC reprints have read this. Just a great, great story. Great little uh, moral to this tale. Just uh, pure EC goodness. Sci-fi and robots. great stuff and let's uh, we get to the direct currents part upcoming books uh, sneak previews of some stuff that was coming out then uh, Blackhawk survival uh, one of the first sketches of uh, supergirl or I mean not Supergirl, but power girl uh, man bat there was like a first concept sketch of power girl Batman Family, Man Bat. And then all the regular listings. Just reading this and seeing this, I mean, it was like, like I said, this was before previews came out. And to have something like this that told you uh, the upcoming books or the books that were out that month, you know, and you could have your, you know, have a little thing where you could check them off and whatever. Uh, but just a really big kick for me as a kid, you know, made me want to search out more back issues from DC. I'm sure it was the same thing with uh, Foom. Like I say, I only have a couple issues of that, so I'm not sure how much they advertised upcoming books. But, uh, you know, this is just really great to me. And yeah, more of the same. Another, little, uh, another great article on how uh, a comic is created. 40 years ago, <laughs> 41 years ago. And you have, uh, this is actually the uh, penciled, just the pencils of the splash page of uh, Warlord Number 1 by Mike Grell. And then here's the finished ink version. I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Little uh, Cain and Abel strip about John Albano and uh, Mike Kaluta actually did some humor. Okay. Number six, actually got a higher grade copy of that one because I would uh, just about worn that one out. Uh, here's number seven. It's a special Superman issue. Very very nice, Kurt Swan cover. And on the back, I don't have to tell you who did that. Okay. Here's some pictures of an early Superman. There's an article about uh, Mort Washinger.
And Mort was kind of like the guy that uh, created scientific explanations for Superman's powers. If you read a lot of the Silver Age Superman stuff, yeah, it was kind of silly, but uh, I guess they thought they had to throw something in there that was uh, fact-based. Some more Superman stuff. And this is something I guess I forgot it, but uh, when Weisinger first started working for DC, he was told to dream up some new characters until he could begin regular duty. So here were the results Aquaman, Green Arrow, and Johnny Quick. I'd forgotten that actually. And for uh, those of you that read Superman in the 70s, Clark Kent would come into his apartment and like throw his hat down on this little uh, bust of a head that he called Morty. And that was actually Mort Weisinger. Okay. More Superman stuff. Letters. Here's uh, one of DC's office managers walking around in a Superman costume. Pretty funny stuff. And more history. Superboy, Jimmy Olsen, Lois Lane. More direct currents, advertising the upcoming Dick Tracy and uh, Super Friends treasuries, which I have, I'm happy to say. Here's a couple of uh, sneak previews of uh, All Star Comics with some uh, Wally Wood inks, some more swamp thing there. Like I said in the last video, even though I've probably got 95% of this stuff, if not 100% of it, it still just kind of gets me juiced up just to look at it. And I'm sure by now, there, I know, well, I know for a fact there are websites where you can look this stuff up and find out who did what and when the books were coming out. But, uh, you know, it's kind of different just holding the book in your hand. There's a preview of A Man Bat by Ditko and Dr. Fate by uh, Walt Simonson. One of my favorite comic stories. Oh, and I'm guessing that this is, uh, I don't know who did this, is it Swan? Uh, 23. Okay, I'm just going to guess this is Kurt Swan, probably a, uh, Maybe some concept art or a rough sketch for a Lois Lane cover. Nice little article, Remembering with Kurt Swan.
And uh, for you Silver Age sci-fi fans, uh, Swan did a whole lot of the uh, Tommy Tomorrow stuff. There's Kirk Allen as Superman. Superman of the Serials. I really need to see if I can find these on DVD. I'm sure they're out by now, but uh, that's some really cool stuff. And I thought this was really cool. Uh, for those of you that have seen this cover, Superman 289, it was uh, actually uh, some uh, guys that worked for DC outside the offices. And uh, the Phantom Horseman, and this shows them uh, kind of clowning around and, and setting up the, the photographic shots. Okay, and I guess this is uh, what's been published, but it was uh, a mini-comic. There were giveaways in Kellogg's Cyril in 1955, and uh, this is by Kurt Swan and Stan K. Some black and white Superman from 1955. Faces of Superman and Lois. And that's issue number seven. Uh, issue number eight, another one that I uh, ordered when I was a kid. And you can tell it's, uh, it's pretty beat up. Uh, but you have a Carmine Infantino cover with a lot of the characters that he drew back then. Gorilla Grodd, Flashes. Adam Strange, Batman, and here's an ad for the uh, Superman of America thing from the Golden Age that you could get when you were a kid. Here's the story behind the cover. And an article on Carmine Infantino. A little sketch by Neil Adams. Some of the stuff Carmine did, I'm sure you're familiar with. And some you might not be. It's probably by uh, Infantino and Murphy Anderson. More Infantino stuff. Some more uh, Kirk Allen and Noel Neal Superman. And here's some more uh, reprints of some uh, mini comics that came in Pop Tarts in the mid 1960s. And this is by uh, Infantino and Murphy Anderson. 
So for all you Batman fanatics, of which I proudly call myself one, Okay, and here's an article on the, one of my favorite sci-fi characters, Adam Strange. Some great stories in uh, Mystery in Space, Strange Adventures. This is a map of the planet Ran. I think in another issue there's a uh, an alternate universe version of this. It's called Also Ran. Anyway, more letters pages. Uh, some villain profiles of some of the Flash villains. Just a little bit of everything in these books. More villains from the Rogues Gallery. I actually just got through uh, binge watching the first uh, season of The Flash because I'd missed so many episodes of it when I was uh, working those nights. Great show. More direct currents. Christmas with the superheroes and Rudolph treasures. And actually, these are really maybe not hard to find, but they're a lot more expensive than some of the other treasuries. There's the ad for the uh, Superman Spider Man crossover. Another great memory from my childhood. And like I say, I, uh, I, it was me or somebody else, I think it was me that actually uh, checked a lot of these off when I was a kid. So, and pretty much back then, I, as you can tell by the check marks, I was uh, trying to pick up everything I could DC related. Here's uh, get some anniversaries of some firsts, 20, 30, and 40 years ago, circa 1975. And we have a, uh, I guess this was 10 years ago. I have really a cool article on the Dead Man, the haphazard history of Boston brand. Reprinting some of the classic Adams covers. Some other uh, guest appearances by Dead Man. And uh, to that point, here was a, a reading chronology. And here's a reprint some stuff uh, from yesteryear. Superman of America. Junior Justice Society of America. And you have a newspaper strip by uh, Infantino called Hometown. Never had heard of this. And So there we are, issue number eight.
Like I say, yeah, most of these that I've worn out when I was a kid, I went ahead and got uh, upgrades. And if I didn't mention in the first video, uh, I was lucky enough probably 10 or 12 years ago to find a whole set of these for like 50 bucks. Uh, some issues, especially including this next one, are like really pricey. Uh, and as, the, as far as the series as a whole, depending on the grade of the, of the issue, you know, they're anywhere from 25 to 150 bucks each. So if, if you're lucky enough to uh, find a whole set, probably worth getting if you're interested. Uh, this is the one that uh, was like the issue to get because uh, back around that time, uh, like in the early to mid late 70s, Legion of Superheroes fandom was becoming huge. And I became a huge fan myself. And so this is the issue that's uh, like most sought after by collectors, the All Legion issue. Kind of reprinting uh, some covers from old Superboy and Adventure books. Got a great Dave Cockrum cover there. Just love the covers, uh, the colors on this. But this is probably the most expensive to try to uh, try to acquire. So you have uh, probably some model sheets that Kurt Swan did for the Legion. And this is a lot of this in here is like a Legion checklist, uh, showing the and stuff showing the clubhouse and uh, the Legion constitution and all kinds of stuff. Uh, like a table of contents, some adventure comics, cover repros. And I guess like a, up to that point, like a complete checklist or chronology of Legion and uh, adventure comics and action comics. So up to that point, it was a real valuable uh, resource uh, for Legion fans. And on up through the mid 70s. Some of my favorite stuff. Uh, written by Jim Shooter and Carrie Bates. Art by uh, Dave Cochran and Mike Grell. And a repro of uh, Action 300, or uh, I'm sorry, Adventure 300. And uh, that was one of my uh, Silver Age Grails that I finally picked up a couple years ago in good shape. So uh, with issue 300, this actually began. A uh, an 80 issue run from like 300, well I guess 81 from 300 to 380 was like all Legion. There's articles on the clubhouses, equipment, the Legion Constitution. Like I say, back then Legion fandom was a big thing, uh, and then the early 80s it was kind of surprising. I'm well, I'm, I'm sure. A lot of people aren't surprised to know that uh, the New Teen Titans was one of DC's best sellers, but also the Legion of Superheroes was like number two for like several years. More fact files about the Legion, some more characters. pages. Uh, here is a full page ad for the uh, Super DC Con of 1976. I guess that told you how to get tickets and reservations and hotels. Uh, order back issues of Amazing World. Uh, more on how a comic is created. This is from a Legion issue. I think this is uh, probably issue uh, 212. And here's a page that actually did not make it into the story. This page was uh, was actually edited from the story. But I think in uh, some like in some later reprints, you could in a trade you could probably find that page with uh, Karate Kid and uh, Mad Reader Lad and some real nice Mike Grell artwork.
more direct currents, more Superman, Spider-Man. And here is the uh, two-page spread from uh, Superboy and the Legion 200, the wedding of uh, Bouncing Boy and Duo Damsel, with, uh, Dave Cockrum art. And for those of you in the know, there was some, uh, I think there were some characters you might be kind of surprised to see if you looked real close. I won't spoil that, but uh, pretty cool spread by Dave Cockrum. More direct currents. Okay, uh, the rest of the issue just more of the same, more fact files on the backgrounds of each of the Legionnaires, some illustrations. Okay, and some more cover repros. Great stuff. Okay, this is running kind of long too. Uh, this will be the last one I show. This is issue number 10, Behind the Scenes in DC's Production Department. Here's some title that I didn't know about then, uh, Movie Comics. Photo of Adam West and Burt Ward, the old Batman TV show. There's an article on uh, Saul Harrison and Jack Adler. The young Jack Adler working on some uh, Prince Valiant pages. Photo from 1947. No more articles. A great article on uh, the showcase title. I think at one time uh, the New Gods was supposed to be in a showcase book. There's a uh, mock-up of the cover that I think might have possibly been before they actually gave the New Gods a title. So pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, more ads about the Super DC Con. I'm sure that would have been a hoot to attend that one. Okay, and a repro of the cover of uh, Green Lantern number eight in the Silver Age. That's why I love uh, black and white magazines so much because you see stuff like this and it really makes you appreciate the talent of the artist that did it. And here's some pictures of uh, some early cosplayers. Uh, 
more direct currents, advertising a couple more of uh, those great treasuries. And in the back, uh, we have a story with art by Ramona Ferdon called Through the Ringer. And fans of Miss Ferdon remember her from uh, Aquaman, uh, Metamorpho, uh, did some Super Friends in the 70s, also uh, was in on the... Uh, Plastic Man Revival in the mid 70s. Just always loved her art. You know, the unpublished stuff is just one more reason uh, to have these books. Get to see this beautiful black and white artwork. And uh, more articles on how a comic is created. Uh, I think this uh, kind of deals with uh, the lettering aspect of it. And Ben Oda is a name that you saw a lot on DC's comics. One of their uh, great letterers. And it shows uh, the steps in preparing a cover from the original art and the logo and the type all the way through to the finished product. Okay, and uh, some more black and white stories thrown in the back. I'm not sure who did the art on this. Uh, John Costanza maybe. And you have a photo of uh, Linda Carter and Lyle Wagner from the uh, Wonder Woman TV show. So. Okay, these looks like they're going to average about uh, 35 to 40 minutes for each five issues that I'm showing. So I'm going to cut this one off and I'll probably split the last uh, seven or eight issues into two more videos. So, guys, uh, appreciate you sticking around. Hope you're having a great week. And as always, onward and upward.